Good morning, everybody. Greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus. This morning, I want to uh, preach uh, to you about uh, the eagle. I believe God lays hold of every bird in the Bible, either to teach us how high we can go, how strong we can be, how good we can be, and he also uses birds that can show us how low we can become, how low we can sink into the realms of sin. So I'm going to read four verses from Isaiah chapter 40, and we start reading from uh, verse 28. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Thus, uh, Paul may the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his precious word. I believe that the invisible uh, things that God says, Hast thou not known? Hast thou not heard? Has they not seen that the everlasting God fainteth, neither go, go weary. Now, he uses the eagles here to depict the character of himself. But at the same time, he's uh, wanting to challenge the Christian so-called with the same nature and the same habits of the eagle. For I believe the invisible things, Romans chapter 1, verse 20 says, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that have been made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that we are without excuse. I believe that this is God's signature. Why I believe it's his signature, we see it in the petal of a flower. We see it uh, in uh, the movement of an animal. We see it uh, as we lift up our eyes, we look into the heavens, we see God's signature all over it. It's a big identification mark in the heavens. The eagle, I I am an ordered watcher of Geo Wild and I watch the flight habits of this bird. It's amazing the way this bird conducts itself. The Bible says that God wants us to know how high we can climb, how strong we can get. You know, an eagle doesn't fight with any other bird on a geographical uh, geo wild i watched him he will uh, soar in the heavens and look from about twenty thousand feet up in the sky and see a fish swimming under the water he come down at the speed of lightning and bury himself under the water and get hold of that fish and come out of the water again with the fish in his claws. That means that uh, he's a fantastic bird. He's not an ordinary uh, bird like a sparrow. He's uh, a bird uh, that we don't see on the ground. We only see him in the sky because his nest is made high. The Bible says in Jeremiah, the Bible says the nest of an eagle is made high in the mountain because 
we cannot uh, live with equal serve. The temperature is above human temperature. And I believe that God wants us to know uh, th this morning. God uses this word to show us how strong we can come. I don't believe uh, this is a nature study this morning. I don't believe uh, this is a, a school class this morning. But I do believe God has said we are like eagles. We must be like eagles. We uh, are not supposed to fight with other birds. Our life is in the spirit, in the skies. As near as God, as first of all, the Bible says that uh, we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. So we, uh, to this morning, we are looking through the eyes of one of the T's that God has dotted. And uh, one of the T's that he has crossed because uh, we are, he is telling us something this morning and teaching us something this morning. The Bible says, as an eagle stirred up a nest, this is Moses in Deuteronomy 32 and verse 11. As an eagle stirreth up a nest, hovereth over a young, spread abroad her wings, taketh them, spareth them on her pinions, so the Lord alone did lead him. This is Moses. He says, the Lord led him just like an eagle. The Lord caused him to do the impossible. You know, an eagle comes out from uh, thousands of feet in the sky and picks up a serpent, a water serpent, and looks for the nearest rock that he can find, any sharp rock, and just drop him on that rock and he'll burst asunder. And then he'll take on, pick up the dead serpent and take him to his nest to feed his young. I think that uh, we, as, as eagles, we should do the same with the old devil, the old serpent, the old snake that so many times wants to uh, bamboozle us and look for the rock, which is Christ, and drop him on the, uh, that rock. And when he bursts asunder, we'll have food for our young. This was the identical uh, way that God is showing us how to conduct our Christian life. There's uh, many, many kinds of uh, eagles uh, in the sky. I watch them on geographical world. Uh, there's a golden eagle, there's the imperial eagle, there's uh, the, it symbolizes the kingship of the heavens. We as Christians should be kings and priests unto God. We shouldn't buckle down to any uh, man-made rule that uh, comes to us on the earth. We can be uh, honored and uh, this uh, two weeks, we honor the uh, word of, of, of authority that we must uh, be locked up because uh, of this virus going around. But one thing they can't do, they can't stop us from praying to the God we know because we are just like the eagle. We are people of the heavens. And uh, when we uh, soar into the heavens, the Bible tells us we will soar on the wings of eagles. You know, an eagle is not an ordinary bird. Other birds must flap their wings. They must fly to get up into certain heights. But an eagle has a thorough knowledge of uh, an understanding of the currents of the sky. And he don't need to fly. 
He just opens his wings to the spirit and there he goes. Because uh, the Christian uh, considered this morning is the same by nature. He shouldn't uh, try to work up steam at Christmas time or at Easter time or when he gets buried or at some special meeting. He should be able to just open his, his heart, open his life to the Spirit of God and soar into the heavens and start talking uh, to God. This is the divine nature of, of, of the Christian, so-called. We are not children by name only. An eagle is not an eagle by name only. He's an eagle by nature. He's not like any other bird. I'll tell you why. Because if any man be joined unto the Lord, he is a new creature. He is spirit. And uh, we are joined to the Lord. That's why we got a thorough knowledge of an understanding of the spirit world. God is a spirit, and they that worship him. The Apostle Paul says, he worships nobody else. He bows his knee to the spirit, to the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. He knows what spirit. Jesus came and introduced him to, to that spirit. And, but uh, you know the eagle, goes through a stringent training. I've, I watched this bird on Geographic. He, is, uh, he goes through stringent training. He's born in the comfort of a strong home, of a strong nest. Now, the Christian, when he gets born again by the Spirit of God, he gets born in good condition. He gets born in a good church. He gets born under sound uh, doctrine. He gets born, everything is uh, provided for him. And the baby eagle, when the eggs are hatched, he is born into a beautiful home. Instead of giving, he comes and uh, he relaxes in a... a a beautiful surroundings. But there comes a time when mom and dad comes into his home and starts breaking up his home. I've seen it on Geo Wild. That's why I know today what I'm speaking about. Because he is different to other birds. Other birds, they don't break up their home. They leave the nest as it is. But, you know, God is more interested in our character than our comfort. We might feel comfortable in a certain church, but he is more worried about uh, our comfort. He's more worried about uh, the, the, the way we conduct our lives. One day, uh, I was watching uh, television and uh, I saw this eagle coming and uh, hovering over uh, the nest and uh, the youngster was getting, he was quite a good age really, getting quite agitated and I watched and noticed that here comes father as well and uh, he comes and he breaks up the nest and the the young one holds on for dear life, but there comes a time when uh, he kicks the young one out. And I just read the scripture you, to you in Deuteronomy. The Bible says, as the Lord leads the eagle, so God alone did lead me. Moses was watching this eagle as uh, he tore up the nest and kicked the young one out because uh, the father and mother is more worried about the young eagle's uh, nature than his comfort. And uh, many of us 
do not like uh, uh, hard preaching. Many of us do not like uh, uh, rough handling because uh, uh, they are looking for a better church to go to where uh, better sermons are preached. No, the pastor of that particular church wants to know uh, how uh, uh, your nature is. In, in other words, uh, you know, when uh, you saved for a year or two, uh, then you phoned the pastor maybe 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning, I've got the flu, come and you go and pray for him. Uh, then after five years, he does the same thing. And then the, the pastor will say, well, pray for yourself. He say, no, I'm not coming to that church anymore because uh, uh, he's got no compassion on me. It's not the compassion that we're looking for. It's uh, uh, your nature. We want to develop your nature as a Christian. So uh, we uh, uh, come to, to the nest and we start breaking up. And then the father kicks the, the young bird out and uh, he uh, tries to fly. He can't manage to fly when mom goes down and catches uh, this young uh, eagle on wings and brings her back to the nest. And he will uh, sit in the nest and, and, and uh, start panting. I'm not coming back. I'm not coming back to this uh, church again because uh, uh, here they kick. We are the, not tr sorry for you. So uh, we are, are, are there to, to see that the nature of uh, people are the nature of an ego. Then uh, mom and dad does it again until he learns to fly. And after he opens his wings and he learns to fly, then he realizes, yo, I've got the same gift that mom and dad has got. I can take to the heavens. I can take to the skies. I got the equipment to soar into the heavens. That's why the Bible says we'll soar like eagles. Now, where, where do they live? They don't live in uh, nests. They don't live in uh, cages. They don't live in... Uh, Places uh, that are so down. They live in places that are high up. And where do Christians live? Uh, Jeremiah 45, 9 verse 16 says, Thy nest, thy nest is an eye as the eagles. So we uh, want to soar into the heavens where God is. We want to, we want to live our lives uh, where God wants us to live. We know we are on earth, we live in houses, but we are speaking about this bird because God wants us to be like this bird. Eagles are designed for heaven. They only live in heaven. They, they, their food is young lambs, young rabbits. Their food is uh, uh, not like the owl. The owl only comes out when it's dark. You get some Christians that only come to church in the night. They don't come out in the day because uh, they got other birds that uh, seeing them with the Bible in their hand. So they stay at home in the morning and they only come when it's dark. We are not owls. God says that owls are not eagles. Eagles are birds that uh, are not common. They are not ground lovers. They only come down to eat. And when they come down to eat, they only eat good food. They don't eat that which the devil dishes up. They don't eat a sermon that is uh, they're designed for 10 minutes. They eat good food. They prepare 
the, the pastor prepares uh, good food for them. So we know that uh, uh, Moses, he was an eagle of God. David was an eagle of God. Uh, Jacob was an eagle of God. The Bible says that Abraham, I read it last night, that Abraham, the blessing of the Lord that comes upon Abraham, if it comes on the Gentiles, it's in, in uh, Galatians chapter 3, then we have the blessing of the Spirit. Now, the blessing of the Spirit will put you on high. Will be, you'll be like the eagle. The Lord was with Joseph. The Bible says he was with him in jail. He was with him in the pit. He was with him uh, in Pharaoh's house. He was with him wherever he went. And the Lord was with him. So if you are, have a, a bad month or a bad week, you must remember that the Lord is there with you. He said, I'll never forsake you. I'll never leave you. I'll be with you even unto the end of the age. The Bible says that uh, there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. You know, a brother is supposed to be a friend, but Jesus is a friend closer than him because he is a friend unto the end of the age. Your brother is only a friend until you die. But uh, I want to speak to you about the habits of, 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 an, of an eagle. And this should be the habits of, of a Christian as well. An eagle has uh, wonderful eyes. An eagle can see the enemy afar off. You know, a hawk, the hawk can read your newspaper from a mile away. What you reading there. But an eagle can outdo a hawk any time. He is a mystery bird. He is uh, a mystery to the bird world. And I want to say this this morning, that the Christian is a mystery to the devil. He's a mystery uh, to the world. He's even a mystery uh, to his very own because he is he, supposed to be like the eagle to live in the heavens with God. So he is a, we should be a mercy as Christians without any human help, without any human support, we can do miracles. An eagle don't need uh, uh, a gun to kill a rabbit. He don't need a bow, an arrow to kill uh, a fox. I seen him pick up a fox Hallelujah, and carry the fox to his to his nest. You see, the Christian supposed to be a miracle worker. God has done enough miracles uh, in my life. That's why I can talk about the eagle. Why the the eagle is different to other birds is because his bones are cylindrical. He's got hollow bones. He can go and uh, dance in the storm. Other birds uh, don't like the storm. They make for the nearest tree. They make for the nearest roof, uh, like sparrows. They uh, only fly uh, low altitude because they haven't got cylindrical bones. But eagles, They've got cylindrical bones. They can do things that other birds can't do. So uh, when we are born, we are born into sin. We are born from our mother's womb. But when we are born again, 
we become different creatures altogether. God gives us, uh, the Bible says we will mount up. The Bible don't say we'll jerk up. We are not people that get jerks of miracles now and again. No, no, a hundred times no. We are uh, eagles because we love the storms. When hard times come against us, we can uh, say with the hymn, right? you know there's a, a hymn that I, uh, I love to sing. The Bible, don't say it, but uh, somebody wrote that rise and shine into the sunlight ray, using both your wings of prayer and praise. We're different. We're different. We, because God uh, comes and, 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 and listens to us when we fly, when we uh, pray and cannot get your answers through, then you get a scourge. You don't know what to do. Cause you, you stop to beg and to plead, but you hallelujahs your raise. Your petition shall ascend on wings of prayer and praise. You see, the eagle is different to any other bird. You get uh, uh, cage birds, like uh, uh, pollies and uh, budgies, and uh, you get canaries. They are all cage birds. They, you get birds that are in cages. They are in cages until the day they die. They are not born free. But when you are born again, you are born free. Nicodemus asked Jesus, he said, how do you turn the grapes into, how do you make water into wine? Jesus said, Nicodemus, you're a master in Israel and you don't know these things. I'm surprised at you because uh, when we uh, know God, we become uh, miraculous. We become uh, not like other birds. We are uh, uh, like eagles. You can mount up. They don't stop. When they are uh, uh, other birds like the crows, they, uh, I watch them, especially in uh, Natal. When I used to travel up to uh, Schwarzenegger, the crows, they only come waiting on the telephone pole, these blackbirds, they wait for a car to knock down some uh, creature on the road and they come and eat there. And all they can do is uh, squawk. You know, a crow squawks. He says, ka, 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 ka. You get these black demons in the church. They squawk. They uh, uh, don't... Uh, scream like an eagle. They squawk. They come and tell you this and that. There's polish in the church also. A poly repeats everything that he hears. And uh, everything uh, that uh, a poly hears, he, he, he polish in the church that say, you know, this uh, woman uh, is like this and that brother is like this and that pastor is like this and that. But uh, Owls are the same. Owls, they only eat rats. They are not like eagles. When the eagle fights, he doesn't fight. He's a clean bird. He fights with uh, other eagles, uh, either to uh, get some food or uh, tick over his nest. But eagles get sick. And when eagles are sick, they uh, go lay on the rock. And uh, the sun that uh, shines on the rock draws out chemicals of the rock. And uh, it, uh, it administers e uh, healing uh, to this bird. And we've uh, got to just lay on Jesus. He's the rock of ages. He is... Uh, 
uh, one that ministers uh, healing to our bodies and healing to our soul. So, uh, so eagles, uh, they also die. But uh, I watch this on Geo Wild. If you can get this program again, he goes and he, he looks for the highest rock and then he gives a scream. And he screams. And I was wondering why he's screaming. He screams and then he bows his head and he, and he, he falls over. It's the way he, he dies. You know, Christians don't go to the grave. That's not the end. When Jesus went to the grave, he came back from the resurrection with proof that uh, he's uh, got his marks on earth. He's not, not the end. The grave is not the end. The grave is only the beginning of an eternal life with God. And that is what the eagle shows us. The eagle is a bird uh, that typifies the Christian so-called. That's the way we've got to live our lives in the presence of the Spirit of God all the time. Not just for a Sunday. Not just for Easter, not just for Good Friday, not just uh, for Christmas, but every day because God has prepared for us. The Bible says, time would fail me to tell you of Samson and of Balak how the widows uh, received their dead raised to life again. They stop the mouths of lions. They quench the violence of the flame. They say plainly, we seek another country. We seek another city whose builder and whose maker is God, eternal in the heavens. For here we have no abiding city. So death is not the end of the life. Hallelujah, that is lived like an eagle. We can mount up on eagle's wings. God wants us to be uh, a person of the, of the sky. God wants us to be miraculous. God wants us to be like the eagle. So I trust this morning, that uh, uh, this is not a nature study, but it is a big identification mark that God has put in the sky. So when I watch Geo Wild and I watch this bird, I can see that it's not an ordinary bird. God wants us to be like him. God wants us to be high and lofty. God wants us to, 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 to soar like an eagle. He's given us, hallelujah, uh, cylindrical bones because we can uh, be seated with Christ in the heavenly places with God. I trust this morning that uh, this message, but uh, bless you your heart and give you new hope to know that uh, God is not uh, uh, a person. The Bible says we have not seen, have we not seen, have we not heard, have we not understood that uh, the everlasting God can doesn't get ready. There's no searching to his understanding. And that should be the Christian as well. The how can uh, the Christian uh, live in this life 
so victorious. The only way we can is to be like the eagle. God bless you this morning and have a wonderful day. Amen. Let us pray together. Father, we thank you this morning that we can have wings like the eagle. We thank you this morning that you can soar on wings as eagles. The, the Afrikaans Bible says also up far, up the fields for an arm. On shall hat up and ne much hot me. On shall loop and ne mart hot me. We thank you this morning that God is a refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Though the earth be moved in the mountains, be carried into the midst of the sea. God will help us at that right earth. He will help us, for he uttered his voice, and the earth melted. So be still and know that I am God. I'll be exalted among the heathen. I'll be exalted in the earth. The God of Jacob is a refuge. The God of, of Israel is a sin. So we, as your people come to thee today and we say we announce the benediction upon uh, this uh, message and upon those that listen to it. The Lord keep thee. The Lord cause his face to shine upon thee. The Lord be gracious unto thee. And the Lord grant thee his feet. Amen. Amen. Yeah.